Embossing folders are one of my absolute favorite card making tools. They're inexpensive, they make a high impact design, and they can be used in lots of ways. Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I'm sharing my top 10 favorite ways to use 3D embossing folders. And to demonstrate those techniques, I'll be sharing the three brand new embossing folders from Simon Hurley and Spellbinders. So first, let's take a quick peek at those brand new 3D embossing folders. First up, in this collaboration between Simon Hurley and Spellbinders is the GeoQuilt 3D embossing folder, a gorgeous graphic design. This is sparkling snow. There's both snowflakes and kind of sparkle designs. This is playful poinsettia, which is an emboss and cut design. So you can cut out that poinsettia at the same time that you emboss. Now let's run through my top 10 favorite ways to use 3D embossing folders. First, I love using 3D embossing folders with metallic paper or cardstock. This one from Spellbinders is very flexible, which means that it really embosses beautifully. My next tip is, especially if you're using Spellbinders 3D embossing folders, grab the universal plate system, which has a special plate to emboss 3D embossing folders without having to crank so hard on the handle. And check that out. The Geo Quilt looks amazing with silver mirror cardstock or gold mirror cardstock. It's it's just such a great look. I also love using white pigment ink on my embossed design. So I used the sparkling snowflake here and then I'm gently covering the top of this embossed design where it's raised with a white ink pigment pad. So I'm not pressing down too hard because I don't want to get a lot of white into the lower areas. I really want it to stay right on top. You can see I got a couple of little smears underneath, but mostly it looks on top and then it really stands out that way. There's also emboss cut and ink. So with one of these folders, the playful poinsettia, you can both emboss and cut at the same time. Then the cut out piece, I will take a little bit of Distress Oxide ink in Lumberjack Plaid and a small shader brush to add some ink to the edges and even the center of this design. I like to start on the edge so that the edge gets a nice darker look to it and then the center is much lighter. So it really stands out from the background that we've already embossed. I'll add a little bit of a flower center with Distress Oxide Mustard Seed and then you can see how nicely it stands out from that alabaster background. Another way to to use 3D embossing folders is to create a watercolor effect. So we're going to use Distress watercolor paper and a couple of dye inks from Simon Hurley and just rub those inks on the embossing folder. Don't worry, it won't ruin your embossing folder. It will wash off with water. I have two colors here and then I'll spritz them with water. I love using the Distress sprayer to do that because you can get lots of different levels of water spray. You can see it's beading up on the embossing folder. So I'm definitely going to get a watery effect rather than just an inked effect. So I'll run that through my die cut machine, open it up and check it out. Even the line between the two colors has that nice watercolor effect. But you can of course spritz some more water and the ink before it dries will move around a bit more, creating little white spots and I'll use a paper towel to take off some of the ink for even more white on this background. And I love how the snowflakes remain white because they are embossed. There's also a way to use heat embossing with 3D embossing folders. I add anti-static powder tool to the cardstock and then rub Versamark ink on one side of the GeoQuilt 3D embossing folder and send it through my die cut machine and then pour the embossing powder on top of the side that I had the Versamark ink on. I'll just add a little bit more here and there take off some here and there because I do want little spots of white that shows the different dimension and the pattern you can really see it's different than using metallic paper where the whole thing is metallic and I really 
really love the effect, especially for a holiday card. This next technique is a solar paste rub, and Simon Hurley showed how amazing lunar paste and solar paste can look just rubbed on with your finger over embossed backgrounds. So I am using three colors of solar paste here, and I'll just take a little bit out of the jar, put it on my glass mat, and then tap my finger in it, and then go over portions of the image that I want in that color. So you can see this is so much fun to do. It's like finger painting. If you don't mind getting your fingers a little messy, it is a blast. If you do, you could always use some type of glove so that you can have the same technique but not get your fingers all solar pasted up. So once I have all the flowers covered in that red solar paste color. Next, I'll move on to the green and I'll do the holly leaves and the poinsettia leaves in those colors. Then I'll have the centers of the flowers with a little bit of the yellow solar paste. And then I'll go back in and just fix up some areas that I want and just check that out. So much shine and beauty on that. If you're not up for using your finger, you can also do a solar paste blend on an embossed background. So I have two different colors of solar paste and I have have a domed foam blender. I'm starting with one color and just smearing some of the paste on that embossed background, going in with the second color, and then going back and forth. So you can see that there are definitely two colors of solar paste here. I love that effect. It looks like a winter snowflake storm back there. And as it dries, there's less white and more just shiny color. So it is a beautiful way to create a background. So I've already shared solar paste rub with your finger but how about lunar paste rub with your finger and this is the way to make lunar paste really shine is to use it on a dark color of cardstock so I know this seems a little unintuitive to use black cardstock on a Christmas card but wait until you see the finished product so I'll start here with game over lunar paste similar to what we did with the solar paste only I'm being a little bit more careful, honestly, because the lunar paste really shows up on that black background. So I don't want too much smearing in between of colors. And I want to make sure that the items that are supposed to be red are red and the items that are supposed to be green are green. So I'll go back in a couple of times to fix some of my quote unquote mistakes and really shine it up. But check that out. It is unbelievable the effects you can get with lunar paste on dark cardstock. This next technique is simply putting ink on the embossing folder. Before we used a watercolor effect, this time we're just going to straight up ink the background. Now, here you can actually get two different looks from this and I'll show both. So depending on how you want the effect to come out, this time I'm actually inking on the part where the snowflakes are raised up from the folder. So I'll just ink that up, run it through the die cut machine and then check it out. So the snowflakes here are blue and there's some white in the background. Next, we can ink on the flip side of the folder where the snowflakes drop down into the folder itself. So the snowflakes are depressed rather than high up. This time you'll get the snowflakes white with the blue background. So I love that this is one technique that you can get two different looks from just depending on which side of the folder you ink up. This next technique is like the others in that you can use it with regular embossing folders, but it works really well with 3D embossing folders, and that is to use stamping foam. So heat up your stamping foam and then place one side of the folder down on the foam and press down and you'll get a beautiful impression. Then you can ink that up with a couple of colors of Simon Hurley inks. They are super nice and reactive to water, so spritz them just a couple of times and then flip it over on some cardstock and you can stamp the design that you emboss. Now this gives you a whole different look because check this out, you can really see the elements and design of the folder here. What I really think is amazing is just how many different effects you can get by using 3D embossing folders. With all these stunning backgrounds, it's very easy to complete cards. So let's run through and use them up to create some 
fun holiday cards. If you haven't seen my Simon Hurley snow globe video yet, you need to check it out. I will link it up here in the right hand corner, but I saved a couple of snow globes for these backgrounds. I knew the embossing folders were coming out and I wanted to use them. So here is the little snowman globe on the watercolor snowflake background. I think it's a great background for this snow globe. You'll also remember from that video, there is a set of foilable sentiments that are on one foil plate and the die is on one foil plate. And in that video, I cut out a ton of those sentiments in different foil colors. So for this solar paste, finger rub card. I'll cut it down to four by five and a quarter so that I can mat it on some matching cardstock. It is the same cardstock I used for the design, but it creates a nice mat in the background since it's not touched with any solar paste at all. It just kind of creates that clean line around the whole thing and just completes the card and keeps it nice and consistent. Then I'll take one of the foil sentiments and pop it up on some Spellbinders foam squares. It says it's the most wonderful time of the year. This one, I decided to use one of the dies from the snow globe set. And this is a little Santa and sleigh and reindeer. So um, I'll just use a little bit of liquid glue on that, adhere it down to the blended solar paste background, and then pop up a sentiment that says Santa Claus is coming to town. I love this background. It was so much fun to create. Next, we have the two different embossed ink backgrounds, one that has blue snowflakes and one that has white snowflakes. So I'll do the same thing. I'll mat it on some silver mirror cardstock and pop up a gold sentiment for this one. And then I'll mat it on a white cardstock background for this one that has the white snowflakes and then pop up a silver foil sentiment. So these sentiments come really in handy. If you are mass producing, just mass foil a bunch of these sentiments and you'll have tons of them to use for different holiday cards. Next up is the poinsettia. So I'll adhere that embossed background with the die cut piece out onto another piece of alabaster cardstock and then I'll pop up the flower right where it's supposed to go in the design. So it just looks like it was colored all on its own and it has a little dimension as well. And then I'll add a foiled sentiment that says have a holly jolly Christmas at the bottom. Super simple, comes out really striking. For the white pigment ink snowflakes, I just love this background and I'm not gonna do anything else to it other than add a sentiment that says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. You don't have to do much with these backgrounds because they are so stunning on their own. Let them steal the show. For the embossed, heat embossed background, I did cut it down and then mat it on some gold mirror cardstock. And then again, pop up one of the foiled sentiments. This time it's gold. It says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Again, you don't need anything else but you could add little pearls or little metallic embellishments, whatever you want, but I think they're pretty just as they are. For this stamping foam background, I cut it down to four by five and a quarter, and I'm matting it on some dark navy cardstock. Then I'll take a little strip of white cardstock and place it in the sparkling snow background. Then I'll just ink blend with a blending brush just on those areas where those snowflakes are so that they really pop out with some bright blue ink. This is obviously another way that you could use these embossing folders. Look at how nicely those snowflakes and sparkle designs show up on this background of white cardstock. So I'll use that as kind of a band across the panel, and then I'm able to use a thin sentiment that says let it snow and it stands out a little bit more from that background. Next we have the playful poinsettia that I used the lunar paste finger rub. I have a sentiment that's foiled in gold and I'm using some of the love struck Simon Hurley ink to ink blend on that sentiment. So all I'll have to do is if some ink gets on the foil it will resist it. So just buff it away with a paper towel or a soft dry cloth so you can really make that 
gold foiling stand out, but I really thought that I was either going to have to foil on black cardstock or color it like this so that it kind of all works well together. And I really like the red here with the gold in the sentiment and just check out, you don't need anything else for this for sure because the design of the embossing folder is so beautiful and the colors of the lunar paste are just so rich. This first card there on the left is the silver mirror embossed cardstock with the geo quilt design and a snow globe on top. You'll be able to see all the cards on my blog if you want so that you can see them up close as well. But I hope you can see the value for your money in buying 3D embossing folders. There's just so many different ways to use them. I don't know about you, but 3D embossing folders are absolutely one of my favorite ways to add interest to cards. But I'd love to hear if you use embossing folders in any of these ways or other ways as well. Let me know in the comments below. YouTube thinks you might be interested in checking out this video next. As always, I want to thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Supplies? Tools. In 10 of my top 10, but 10 of my top 10, that makes no sense.